welcome back again. Uh, so what we're going to do this time is we're going to start creating these UI components such that we can create a list, right? Uh, we're also going to get started on update and delete, uh, so the other parts of CRUD. What we're going to do is we're going to add a um, action sheet, which comes up from the bottom. And we're going to set it up really similar to how Android does their like menu area, right? It's kind of nice to do this in app it's because like if you're making an Android and an iOS version, it's kind of nice to have a tool that's similar on both, um, and it lets you keep your development really in sync, right? So we're going to add a, um, a little menu button, right? And it's going to have these different menu items. We're going to implement delete only. Uh, we're going to save the actual, like, create and update for, for next time. All right, so if you look really closely, uh, there's actually an image up here with three little horizontal bars. Um, and so what we want to do is we want to go download uh, some images. Uh, so there's a link in the slides, hopefully I'll put it just above the video here, uh, but it'll take you to these rows task images, uh, and you'll click on download, and where I want you to save them to is actually like right into the rows task folder. Um, and so if you save the .zip uh, into this top level folder here, it'll put it at the same level as like rows task and rows test. Uh, and then if you go show it in Finder, uh, and you double click on it, uh, it should open up uh, a folder with all those images. Now they're not in the project yet, uh, and that's intentional, um, and we're going to drag them over, but they are in that folder um, that's going to get zipped, and the reason I do that is in case you make a reference to them and don't actually copy them into the project, then when you submit your, your .zip to Moodle, uh, I'll get them that way. Uh, so if you wanted to, you could actually clean it up, so you can now get rid of the .zip file, uh, also, if you go in there, there's one called this FW that stands for Fireworks. That's the program I use to make them. You can delete that one as well. You only really need, um, there's five like individual images. So there's these five, and then there's an icon file or two, right, of different sizes. I shouldn't have said or two. There's a bunch of them. So what I want to do is I want to copy, uh, first off, these five files that are not icons and put them over in supporting files. So I literally just drag and drop them over. I am going to go ahead and check mark the copy items if needed. Um, and what that'll do is that'll actually make another copy of them um, if you go look at it in Finder. Uh, so they're at this level. Uh, and then if you go into here, uh, they're also at this level, right? So I didn't really need to copy them in, but there, there's no harm. The other images that we want to bring over are these icons. Uh, so there's a bunch of different icon files. You could do the same thing with those, but I'll, I'll try to use the new system, and the new system is images.xcodeassets, uh, and to drop them in here, um, and it's basically the same. Uh, you just drag and you drop them in here. Uh, I typically, I think you need to like make sure you see these gray boxes before you let them go, uh, and then what should happen is it should just put the ones in the right place. You can see I didn't provide every single image known to man but I provided most of the ones that you're ever gonna like ever really need. You also notice with those um, image assets that it didn't ask you to copy them in or not, and that was why it was important uh, that you put them in a path that's gonna be in the .zip that you, that you give to me on Moodle, right? So uh, that's why we actually put it at that location because it actually just keeps references to those files and doesn't copy them. So if you put in those icon files, you should hopefully be able to see your icon now. Uh, so you have to open up the simulator, uh, do a command shift H, uh, and you should be able to see the rose task uh, icon there. All right, I'm gonna catch the slides up a little bit. So we copied over those five uh, into supporting files. We'll put the uh, image assets in uh, and we've got our icon. Next thing we wanna do is we wanna make a bar button item uh, that uses uh, the three little bars. So I'm going to do that over in the storyboard. So in the storyboard right now, if I zoom out, we've only got one view controller um, and a nav controller. And then what I want to do is I just want to search for uh, bar button item. So bar button item. And I'm just going to drag it here and drop it uh, right there. If you look at where that drops it, it, it drops it onto the navigation item, which, which was there by default. And instead of saying the word item, uh, we instead wanted to have an image. We wanted to have one of those images that we just copied over uh, the IC menu bars. In addition to the look, we also want to connect it. Um, so the way that I like to connect it is I go to the connection assistant manager here. I like to make my IB outlets in the .h file. You can 
do it in, in a number of different ways. Uh, but what I really want to do is I just want a connection from this guy's action. So I right click, drag, and bring him over. And then the number one thing I always forget to do is change it from outlet to action. So I'm going to say action. Um, and then I'm just going to type in, I don't know, pressed options menu. And I say the word menu because that's how I think of it, right? Because I think of it like an Android menu. Uh, I also like the look of spaces around it there. If you forgot and you accidentally did make an outlet, it's really easy to fix. Uh, but the best way to do it um, is to look at the connections that the view controller has. Um, and you should be able to find a connection for um, the action, which is good. And then if you accidentally made an outlet connection, you would just, just hit the X. No big deal on that. All right, let's go over and uh, look at this method. So we've got a method uh, called pressed options menu. It got put somewhere in the .m file. It looks like it got put at the very, very bottom. Uh, I want to put it up above all of this table view stuff. Um, I'll put it above the segue area. Uh, I'm sure I'll put it right around here. So whenever somebody presses the options button, uh, what we want to do is we want to show that sheet from the bottom. It's called an action sheet. Uh, the way you create an action sheet is through an alert controller. Um, it's interesting that an action sheet and an alert view, which is a dialog, they're both made the same way from uh, an alert controller. Uh, you can call it alert controller. Uh, I think that's what I called in the si slides. Uh, just because it gets long, I'm going to call it AC. Uh, the way you make an alert controller, um, you call a helper method um, that's on a UI alert controller of the class called alert controller with title. Uh, I'll scroll it up a little bit here and give myself some more screen real estate. Um, it has a number of parameters that you pass in. Um, it can have a title and a message. I think those are actually kind of more useful if it's going to be an alert view. So I'm just going to actually pass in nil and nil for both of those. And then the style, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight it and hit enter, uh, and that'll just kind of type what was there. And you can see that if you hit control space, there are two options. There's action sheet, which is what we want here, or alert, which is like a dialog. So we want an action sheet. Great. So that creates our alert controller. The next thing you're going to want to do, I'll just put a to do here for now, to do add buttons. Uh, so what are like the menu options? So one menu option is to create a list. Another one is to uh, delete a list. So kind of thinking about the crud. Uh, what this button's going to really do is it's going to actually uh, toggle the editing mode. And so by toggle the editing mode, it's like whether you're in delete mode or not. We also want to be able to do an update. Uh, so we'll just say, uh, toggle the show rename buttons we'll get more into that in a later video but we're going to put up rename buttons such that you can click them and rename it there's a lot of ways to do things like rename uh, and we're also going to need a cancel once we add those which we have not yet done that uh, then we're going to present uh, this view controller called ac in an animated way sure um, and then no completion handle the completion handler would be a, a function that fires after it's finished popping up. We don't need that. We'll just say no. All right, time to add our buttons. So we got four buttons. Uh, each of these buttons is an alert action. Uh, this is the exact same as what we did in Swift. Uh, it's just the syntax is now different. Um, so one of these actions is going to be to create the list. Uh, I'll just say alert action. And then honestly, I don't remember the function name, but if I started kind of guessing uh, action with title, uh, style, and handler, that, that seems pretty promising, right? Um, so the title for this one is just going to be create a list. The style, uh, same trick as before, I hit enter on it just to see kind of what my options are. My options are default, destructive, and cancel. Uh, for this one, we'll just do default. Uh, and then the handler, um, I'm just going to hit enter to type that code, and I'll just put a log uh, for now. So we'll just say uh, create a list. Once you've got an action, you need to actually add it uh, to the alert controller. Uh, so it's just add action, so add the create list. Let's get that up a little so you can see it. And if we run it now, um, you can actually, like, 
click this button um, and it should show create a list. It's not very exciting to have one, uh, but you can see that things are working, right? Because I'm lazy, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to kind of paste this on here um, <laughs> four times, right? And then I'm going to go through and just, just fix them up some. So instead of create list, uh, one of them is going to be for the editing mode. So I'm going to create that as the action. Then I'm going to add the editing mode. Uh, one of them is the rename action. And so instead of adding create list again, I'm going to add rename action. And then there's the cancel action, right? Um, and so there's the cancel action. Uh, let's just quickly give them all a title. Uh, so we'll just say delete a list for now. And then instead of the default action, I actually want a different one. I want destructive uh, for that guy. Sorry, it's kind of off the screen. Um, and we'll change his log. So we'll just make it say delete for now. Uh, for rename, uh, we're just going to say show rename buttons. I'm going to come back and make that a little fancier uh, in a little bit, but for now I'm just going to just going to do it that way. Show rename uh, buttons, and then the last one is just cancel. And cancel instead of the default action, uh, I want the cancel action. So I just kind of quickly went through here. Oh, and I suppose it should say the word. Actually, you know what? Cancel is going to have no callback. So instead of having a handler, I'm just going to say nil. So pretty quick, uh, but but hopefully you get the concept, right? So I'm going to have four buttons that show up. Uh, that one's going to be red. This one's going to be separated by a little bit because it's a cancel. Uh, and they should all show a little log of things work. So just kind of testing things out. So it looks good. Delete is in red. Uh, if I hit cancel, it says that one. If I hit delete, it says that one. Show renames does that and then cancel won't say anything at all. Great, things are working. Um, create, we're gonna punt to next time uh, because it's a little too big. We're gonna do that in its own video. Um, delete uh, is funny because delete is actually almost done already. In fact, um, if you wanted to delete something, you, you, you can already. If you just um, swipe it to the left, the delete button shows up. And this is really interesting if you click delete, it really deleted it, right? And the reason it really deleted it is because commit editing style um, is already implemented, right? So it it grabs the object at that row uh, and it deletes it, uh, and then it saves the context. That was code we got for free from the template, which I think is kind of fun. Let's make some of those a little better. Sorry, this video is getting long. Um, let's go ahead and make delete do something other than a log. All we want delete to do is we want to change the editing style like whether if we're currently editing so self.editing um, we just want to change it is really all we want to do so i chose to call the method set editing um, i could have also done self.editing equals bang self.editing that would have worked i like to do it this way because then it goes through a function and if i want to override it i can do that um, it also guarantees that i get animated equals yes so really all delete does is it just toggles that. Um, and you'll notice that um, now if you say delete a list, it'll kick you into the editing mode, right? And if you want to get out of editing mode, you can click delete a li list again and it'll take you out of editing mode. I don't, I, I like that it says delete a list, but I wish this time it would say done editing. So let's, let's make that happen, right? That's not hard. Um, so instead of always saying delete list, what I want to do is I'm going to use a ternary here. Um, I'm in ternary mode, this app, for some reason. Um, so if, it, if we're editing, then I want to say done editing. Um, but if we are not editing, then I want to say delete a list. I could actually use that same exact trick um, for making it destructive or default, which is kind of funny. Wow, that uh, looks horrible in that line. All right, I tried to clean it up a little bit there. Um, so the title is either done editing or delete list. Uh, the style is either uh, default. So if it says done editing, I just want it the default. If it says delete a list, I want it destructive. And now it should like, the, the button in the menu should look right depending on what we're doing. So if we say delete a list, 
it goes into delete mode, and then now it says done editing, which is nice. If you wanted to add another little feature so I can click on, on delete, um, and it, it keeps me in the delete mode, this is a completely optional feature, uh, but you could have it like if you if you delete the last one or even if you delete one, it could kick you out of, of editing mode automatically. I That's a UI choice. I'm going to do it. Um, so like after it deletes an object, I'm going to just uh, turn editing off, right? So I'm going to do it after the save finishes. Um, so I'm going to say editing no, uh, animated yes. Uh, I deleted all of my uh, items in the list. So I've got to bring those back and run it again. So now I'll have three new ones to play with. So this is an optional thing, but if I click delete list and I delete one, it'll kick me out of editing mode when I'm done. And so that's just, how do you think the users are gonna use your app? Are they gonna to wanna to delete one? Or are they gonna delete a lot at a time? Your, your choice. I, I chose to make it to where they just pick one and that's it. Cool, so delete is like done, done, all the way done. Um, let's go ahead and fix up um, the show rename buttons. So show rename buttons, right now it just prints a log. Uh, let's go ahead and have it do a little bit more than that. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna toggle the state of whether we're showing the rename buttons or not. Um, so we're gonna need a variable, right? So we're just gonna add a quickie little property uh, for a bool called show rename buttons. And what we're going to do is we're just going to toggle that state of that bool, right? So show rename buttons. There's a bunch of ways to toggle a bool. Uh, we'll just do it um, is equal to bang of itself. There's fancier ways to do it, but this one will work just fine. Um, and so that's great. Um, I would like to know if it works at all. So, so I actually kind of like this trick above of, of like changing the title depending on the state of the variable. Um, so maybe if we're showing the rename buttons already, we'll do one thing, but then if we're, yeah, you get the idea. Um, so here I'll say, if we're showing them, we'll say hide rename buttons. Um, and then you won't see anything else like for these rename buttons, but you can see it says show rename buttons and I click it. The rename buttons would be up. We just haven't done it yet. Um, and then if I was to say hide rename buttons, they would go away. So we'll have to actually implement that. One thing that you do need to add though, um, you need to add a table view reload data. So if you toggle what is displayed on the table, you need to actually reload it uh, to make sure that it shows up. All right, I think that that's it for this time. Um, I'm gonna run it one more time, um, but I just wanna catch the slides up. So. <laughs> We did, a, we did too much. Um, so we made uh, the pressed options menu. We made the alert controller. We kind of know how that works. Uh, we made the four different actions. So we've got create, uh, editing, which used this ternary thing that I kind of decided to go with this time. Uh, the showing of the rename buttons, which is a feature that's left most half finished. We'll, we'll do the rest later. Um, and then a cancel, which was very simple. Uh, and we can actually delete things, which is cool. Uh, and then we've got this choice um, to delete one uh, and then pause. Great, so everything should work just, just dandy. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and delete off my, my last couple. By the way, the other way you can delete is just to swipe and click delete. And then just kind of in preparation for the next video, I'm gonna comment this out, uh, run it one time so that they all come back uh, and then comment it back out again. All right, so next time what we'll work on is we'll work on um, when you click create a list, uh, doing more than just displaying a log. All right, see you next time.